you are born drowned. Not because you fall, but because you start at the bottom. Your mother never looks back. She flicks her abdomen against the water's surface, each touch firing an egg like shrapnel into the mud. One by one. Hundreds. Thousands. Most sink. Some stick to reeds. A few are eaten before they even settle. You are one of the few that survives. A speck smaller than a grain of rice. Sealed in jelly. Motionless. Until warmth tells you the pond is alive again. Then you split open and crawl into a nightmare. The first thing you see is movement. Everything is movement. Worms twisting, larvae wriggling, water fleas hopping. Every shape means danger. Every shadow could be a mouth. You don't yet know what you are, but your body does. Your lower jaw is a weapon, hinged, folded under your face like a trap door. You twitch it, it snaps forward. Fast, violent, surgical. You impale the first thing that moves. A mosquito larva. Your first heartbeat is a kill. You are a dragonfly nymph, and you are the terror of this pond. You're soft at first, pale, see-through, but you harden quickly. Armor thickening until even tadpoles bounce off your shell. You breathe through gills hidden inside your rectum, pulling water in, pushing it out. Oxygen in, propulsion out. You literally fart yourself forward. Each jet thrust a tiny explosion that kicks silt into swirling clouds. It is ridiculous. It is perfect. Evolution doesn't care about dignity. Your world is a green haze of decay. Rotting leaves rain from above. Algae choke the light. Every square inch hides mouths or needles. Yet, you thrive. You are invisible until you strike. Your eyes, 30,000 lenses, see in mosaic. Your brain fuses all those fragments into one flicker of motion. Nothing escapes. You eat until you are heavy with other lives. Your gut fills with bones, shells, fins. You digest your siblings. Sometimes your mother's other children hatch beside you. You kill them before they learn to swim. Cannibalism isn't cruelty, it's currency. Every body you consume buys you another day alive. Months pass, then seasons, then years. The world above you changes, ice, thaw, storms, but you never leave the pond. Your heart keeps the same slow rhythm as the mud. You molt, 10, 12, 15 times. Each time your body splits down the back and a newer, hungrier version of you slides free. You eat the shell you just shed, waste nothing. You become thick, monstrous, a thumb-sized tank with hooked legs and the patience of a sniper. You sit buried in silt, only your eyes showing. You wait, minutes, hours, days, then a tremor, a shadow. A fish fry darts too close. You launch your mouth. It hits like a spring trap. The prey disappears. You chew slowly, sand grinding between your jaws. The pond fills with your enemy's ghosts. Each kill another step toward adulthood you don't understand. You live like this for three years, maybe five. You're ancient by insect standards, older than the children who will one day scream at your wings. Then one night, everything changes. The water tastes different. The temperature rises. Your body tightens. Something inside you whispers, leave. You climb the nearest reed. Your claws dig into the stem. You rise inch by inch until your head breaks the surface. Air hits you for the first time. It stings. It dries. It suffocates. You can't breathe it. Not yet. But instinct pushes harder than panic. You cling to the reed. Your back splits. Your old shell opens like a coffin. You put yourself out. A wet, trembling creature dragging lungs and legs into a world that burns with light. Your wings unfold like paper soaked in glass. Veins fill with fluid. You hang there for hours, a corpse becoming color. Then you harden. You dry. You lift. And for the first time, you fly. The air is chaos, heat, wind, glare. You lurch and tilt. Your wings blur faster than sight. You stabilize. And suddenly, the world stretches in all directions. Sky, forest, river, infinity. You were blind underwater. Now, you can see everything. You can see 360 degrees around your head. You can see an ultraviolet. You can track the flight of the gnat from 30 feet away. 
You are reborn as a god of motion. But every god has predators. A swallow dives. You roll out of its path. A frog leaps from below. You dodge again. Spiders string death nets between branches. The sky is beautiful, and it wants you dead. You hover near the surface, your shadow flickering across the pond that raised you. Beneath the reflection, other nymphs wait. They look up to you like a prophecy. You were one of them once. Soon, you'll be food for them. You patrol your new kingdom. Your wings hum like saws. You kill everything that moves smaller than you. Midges, flies, mosquitoes. You grab the mid-air, crush them with spined legs, and rip them apart while still flying. You eat while moving, because to stop is to die. Your body burns through energy like fire through paper. Your heart beats 30 times a second. Your wings never rest. Every meal is burned in flight. You are evolution's fighter jet, but your fuel tank is short. You have weeks, maybe a month. That's all. So you search for the only thing that matters. Someone to mate with. You spot another dragonfly. She glints like molten metal. You dive, catch her mid-flight, clamp her neck with a hook on your tail. She thrashes. You twist together into a loop, a living knot of tension and instinct. Humans call it the mating heart, but there's nothing romantic about it. It's anatomy, not affection. You scrape away any trace of other males, then transfer your own seed. She resists. You hold tighter. Evolution rewards cruelty here. When it's over, you guard her while she lays eggs, sometimes dragging her underwater, forcing her to deposit them in reeds or mud. Some females drown. You don't notice. You're already looking for another. This is your legacy, an endless violent ballet above the waterline. Each flight, each grasp, a race against time. The days get hotter, your wings dull, the glass sheen fades, veins crack. You can still fly, but each gust feels heavier. Your muscles tire. You perch more often, rest longer. Then comes the mistake. A wrong landing. A reed too thin. You slip, fall toward the pond. You hit the surface. The water closes over you. You try to fly again, but your wings cling like wet paper. You sink. You thrash. You remember the feeling of breathing water, but that system is gone. You can't inhale. You can't exhale. From below, a shape rises. A nymph. Your own kind. A younger version of yourself. Its jaws unfold, stab forward, and drag you under. You are eaten by your childhood. Your story ends where it began, in the mud, as fuel for the next generation of monsters. Humans look at dragonflies and see beauty. They see color, shimmer, grace. They call you a symbol of summer. They paint you on postcards, hang glass replicas in windows. They never see the pond. They never see the years you spent hunting in filth, the cannibalism, the drowning births, the broken skins. They admire your wings, but never your lungs. They celebrate your flight, but not the pain that built it. You lived most of your life as a predator and died as a victim. You were an assassin for half a decade and a decoration for two weeks. Your beauty is a disguise for exhaustion. Every shimmer of light on your wings is the reflection of something you killed to exist. You are a relic of deep time, a design from 300 million years ago that hasn't needed fixing. Even before the dinosaurs, your ancestors hunted in swamps as wingspans wider than hawks. Now, you're smaller, fragile, temporary. Evolution perfected flight in you and gave you no mercy to go with it. So why does it suck to be born as a dragonfly? Because you begin as a monster and end as a meal. Because your whole life is preparation for a death you can't avoid. Because even perfection expires. You spend years hiding in the dark and days burning in the sun. You breathe water until it kills you and air until it breaks you. You are trapped between two worlds belonging to neither. You are the sharp edge of evolution and the proof that even beauty bleeds. Thank you for watching. If this opened your eyes to the brutal truth behind beauty, hit subscribe, drop a like, and stay tuned for more stories about the creatures that survive by suffering.